St. Ignatius of Loyola, a gallant soldier of Christ, founded the Society of Jesus in the year 1540. In all things, to love and to serve God was the motto of St. Ignatius. Moved by the Spirit of Christ and the same missionary zeal of St. Ignatius, six Jesuits of Maryland Jesuit province, Carol I. Faisy, Quinn Enright, Edward Deneen, John Holland, James Keogh, and Anderson Bakewell arrived at Tatanaga Railway Station on the 10th of December 1947. Steel City being their immediate home, they rented a house popularly known as the Pink Bungalow at 43 Circuit House area. Knit together as one body, though anxious and worried about the huge task ahead, they did share light moments in life. Father Welch recalls. Father Faisy was coming in the gate mm. and he was directing him how to, uh, how to, uh, how to turn to get in the gate without uh, hitting the gate. And uh, Father Faisy told him, don't you have some, something like, don't you have some other work to do in the house? Father Carl Dincher, who witnessed the beginning of the Jamshedpo mission, cherishes the rich experiences of God's hand in every step they took in reaching out to people. Well, these were the beginnings. They were small. We lived in rented houses, 43 circuit area, later 121 circuit area, and the whole of the city was small. Loyola itself, where we began, was uh, started under very poor circumstances. I remember teaching classes under a banyan tree, under a, uh, on the handball court, uh, Latin classes in the school bus and so on. They were small beginnings, but joyful beginnings. Uh, then as the years went on, the mission uh, grew. I was very deeply touched by the uh, movement into the faith of so many. We worked with the poor. Father Nash was a wonderful uh, pastor. He loved the poor. They used to call him Dayalu Gumke, the kind father, because no matter who it was, he loved them. And just like Father Blandon before him, whom they called Mamu Gumke, uncle father, because they both had that deep personal contact with people. Therefore, Jamshedpo province has every reason to celebrate its 60 diamond years. From one rented house in the steel city, today we have spread out not only to two of the 26 states in India, to Jharkhand, the Pittsburgh of America, or the Ruhr Valley of Germany, and Orissa, on the coastal belt of India like Baltimore, but also in the neighboring regions of West Bengal state to as far out as Nigeria. As we celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of the Jamshedpo mission, we thank and salute the first six Jesuits and all the missionaries who served in Jamshedpo province for being the catalysts of God's inspiration and blessing. Our province is celebrating its Diamond Jubilee this year. It's an occasion for each of us to thank God for all that He has been doing for us and also to thank God for all that He has been doing for our people through us. We remember with gratitude the Maryland province of the Society of Jesus which sent the first missionaries to start the Mission in 1948 and also all those missionaries who through their 
selfless service, commitment and generosity helped our province or our mission to grow into a wise province as well as a province later. And with the inclusion of Orissa as part of our province, we have grown geographically also. But we shall not be complacent. We shall not rest upon our achievements. But we shall look at the many more areas we have to cover, the many more people we have to reach out to. Through the grace of God and with our own greater degree of commitment, courage and generosity, coupled with the assistance, both moral and financial, from our benefactors and well-wishers, we shall fulfill what God has planned for us in this part of our country. Loyola School Jamshedpur was the first educational apostolate that was taken up. It was in 1947 that fathers Cecil B. Leeming and Robert Brookman of the Bengal Mission sowed the first seeds of education in the steel city. It had an interesting beginning from a room in a club called the CNR, Chota Nagpur Railway, with barely 44 boys on roll. Today, Loyola has reached its height with an infrastructure accommodating almost 3,000 students who are nationally and internationally known for their excellence in academics and extracurricular activities. Loyola provides its students the best opportunities to grow not just intellectually, but also spiritually and physically. The Jesuits in Loyola work round the clock 24-7 to make its vision and mission a reality. For the last uh, 60 years, uh, we have uh, seen the hand of God working through the Jesuits in building up this Loyola School as an institute of learning. Loyola Project School is an outreach program of the main school that provides opportunity to those who cannot afford to study in the elite schools. In 1992, Father Alex Gyana Prakasam began the school as Loyola Coaching Center for school dropouts, child laborers, and illiterate adults with just a mere 30 students. Today, it has assumed the status of Loyola Project School, having almost 900 students. Loyola Alumni Association is known for its alumni free clinic run by the alumni doctors and others every Saturday attending to nearly two to three hundred patients. It was the brainchild of Father Rocky Vaz and nurtured through the years by the efforts of Fathers Pius Fernandez and Augustin Batamatam. In the same campus is Loyola Hall, which houses the province courier and candidates to the society. The courier consists of Father Provincial James Kalapura, Socius Father Anthony Swami, and Treasurer Father Alex Mascarenas. Father Jerry Kutina, the PCF, the Province Coordinator for Formation, with the help of Father Ranjit Kindo and Scholastic Sunil, 
train the candidates in languages, office skills, music, dance, prayer, physical labor, and games. In addition to this, the candidates do their secular studies in the neighboring colleges. Besides uh, Ignatian spirituality, catechism, and the church teachings, we also have to focus on uh, English and not just English, how they speak English. At the same time, uh, uh, modern technology, because the, the modern technology is growing day by day, and they also have to acquaint themselves with this modern technology so that they can uh, teach the, the kids. Infant Jesus Church, Sonari, is also part of Loyola School's pastoral venture. It was carved out of St. Mary's Parish in 1998. To keep the traditional ties of tribal feasts and festivals in the steel city, parishioners take a keen interest in celebrating them from a Christian faith perspective. One such feast being celebrated is Sarp. Xavier Labor Relations Institute, popularly known as XLRI, is one of the premier business schools in India. The crying need of Jamshedpur's labor force influenced the Jesuits to open a labor relations institute in the steel city. Father Enright took up the challenging task seriously, renting a small room in Boulevard Hotel. The first session began on October 11, 1951. In the 1970s, Father William Tome launched the institute into a whole new orbit with an expansion program in the land leased out by Data Iron and Steel Company. Today, it has met the standards of any top business school in the world. Salari provides world-class facilities for its students, both in terms of uh, academics and for extracurricular activities. Its library, IT and uh, living rooms can be compared with the facilities given by the top business schools in the world. XLRI is distinguished by its sense of mission. It aims at the promotion of professional management in a variety of urban and rural situations, emphasizing a human approach to work, concern for the weaker sections of society, dedication to work, and social justice. Leave alone the management of excellence, the spiritual needs of staff and students too are taken care of by the daily Eucharist in the Institute. Joining in XLRI was almost a dream come true. Best HR school in the Asia. Especially when we had fathers like uh, uh, Father Kathmir Raj or Father San Jane Santanam or Father P.T. Joseph who was teaching us NM, emotional intelligence. He was so involved in the subject, he was so involved in the subject. The kind of learning we had and the kind of enjoyment we had when we had the course was, it was immense. Loyola College of Education is a B.Ed. college situated in the colony established for those working for Tata Motors. Father Ken Judge was convinced that Jesuits should be forming teachers and not just students. In 1976, Father Judge single-handedly began Loyola Teachers Training College in the campus of XLRI. Thereafter, Father George Hess, with his exp expertise in communication and teaching skills, brought the Institute into the limelight in the state. Eventually, the B. Ed. College shifted to the colony owned by Tata Motors Township, with its own campus and having its own identity. It is also an authorized center for IGNU, Indira Gandhi National Open University. In our admission policy, we have an option for the STs and also SCs and OBCs, and STs being 
he, at, at this part of the country, most uh, most of them are Christians. Hence, our option for the Christians also is fulfilled there. And these ESTs and the Christians come from, you know, interior villages, rural areas. Yesu Bhavan is the novitiate situated in Mango, about a mile and a half away from Loyola School. Originally, it was called Trista Anukaran Ashram. Started in the year 1980 in Lupungutu, Chaibasa, with Father Bernard Donnelly as the first novice master. Very soon, the novitiate got a whole new start in September 1985, when it was shifted to Mango and was rechristened as Yesu Bhavan. It is an ideal place for prayer, meditation and self-journeying with the Lord. The spiritual foundation is laid here and the master of novices, the socius and the other Jesuit staff play an important role in shaping the young novices into future pillars of the church. Parallel to the novitiate is Upasana, the spirituality and retreat center built in 1993 with Father Carl Dinch's initiative to offer a convenient place for all who seek to be alone with the Lord. Upasana takes up guided retreats, recollections, counseling, seminars and workshops, irrespective of one's religion besides offering services in spirituality and retreats in different parts of the country. The vision of Upasana is to cater to the clergy, religious, fathers, brothers, sisters, to or Jharkhand, and also to the lay people, to the catechists, teachers of, own, of our own Jamshedpur diocese. So we have all these people coming here, plus it is also open to anybody who would like to come here, spend some time in quiet reflection, prayer, uh, help themselves. XITE, Xavier Institute of Tribal Education, is the initiative of Father P.D. Thomas. XITE trains only tribal youth in the field of management and prepares candidates to compete with other mainstream students in getting into professional institutes. Besides, the Institute conducts in-house training programs for NGOs, industry personnel and non-formal village school teachers. XIT was started in 2003 with the sole intention of preparing tribal leaders for administrative jobs in the state as well as at the center. The reason behind this decision was taken when I was at XLRI when we prepared a development report for the new state of Jharkhand. Therefore we decided we need to prepare the tribal students for IAS, IPS, IFS, MBA etc. so that they will become leaders of the state. St. Thomas High School is a new venture of the Jesuits' collaboration with the village committee situated in Gandhi Dunguri, about five miles from Tatanagar railway station. It was a village school run by Mr. Kandra Hemrom. Only in 1993, at the request of the village committee, that Father Alex Gyana Prakasim made himself available to support them. With the help of generous benefactors, Father Alex then put up a school building, hostel, and also coordinated non-formal education centers in the rural area. Today, the priority of the school is to cater to the educational needs of the Santal tribal children providing the best education possible with modern techniques of teaching. Loyola School Chaira is about 35 miles from Jamshedpo on the Tata-Kolkata Highway. It began in 1997 
to the pioneering efforts of Father Walter Kungari. Keeping in mind the educationally backward Santals of Dalbumkar area, Father Walter ventured into an area where Christian presence was absolutely nil. Today the Jesuit presence there is more than a blessing. The school has hostels for boys and girls and a dispensary to take care of the medical needs of the children and the villagers. Responding to the best training given, children of this area have adapted to the culture of self-discipline, education and sports. After having established Loyola School Chaira, Father Walter moved into the interiors across the Suburna Reka River to a place called Rerwa in 2002, where he opened a primary school, St. Joseph's Training Center, and a hostel purely for Santal children. The chief objective of this venture is to bring up the Santal and scheduled caste children into the mainstream society. Very much stuck with the idea of Peter Arupe, or Peter Arupe. And when the congregation gave me the option for poor, I said, yes, that is the, what uh, the dream of every missionary has been. Go out to the poor, go out and reach out to the poor who are neglected in kind of, who are backward, who are, and yet who are aspiring to come up. So that's why from Chaira, though it was in the highway main line, I wanted to move interior, more and more interior, because there, I could encounter more poor people, more kind of uh, downtrodden in a way. Traditional greetings, traditional living conditions, staff room and office give a beauty of its own to this place called Arupe Nivas, a place that reflects the true Santal conditions in Rerwa. Chai Basa is the oldest mission station of the Jamshedpo Mission Territory. The first Belgian missionary started working here in 1868. For some reason, the mission was abandoned in 1909 and subsequently reopened in 1932. With the arrival of the Maryland Jesuits in 1947, they took up the mission and in 1952, Father Edward Nash became the first parish priest of Chaibasa. The people saw that we did not discriminate. We gave the same attention, same interest, concern to non-Christians as to Christians. And we were very interested in whole culture, whole language. So that helped us become accepted in areas where previously the Christian missions were not so acceptable. Moving ahead in their mission, in view of promoting education among the Hoes, Father John Blandon purchased land in Lupungutu two miles away from Chaibasa Township. Soon, with the initiative of scholastic John Guiderer in 1953, Father Nash started St. Xavier's School in Lupungutu with just four classrooms, and he himself became its first headmaster. Thus, Lupungutu became a central place for new missionary ventures in West Singbom District, Today, Lupungutu has a primary school, high school, and hostels for boys and girls. With the arrival of Father Saleth, Lupungutu can boast of having a junior college which started in 2005. We all should move towards higher education, quality education, so that the students will become competent, efficient, effective in any field they take it up. That will be the next 20 years target to produce great professionals from our schools. The whole publication in Lupungutu is headed by our eminent host scholar, Father John Dini. 
American born but now a citizen of India, he bears witness to his service to whole culture and society. His intensive research with Mr. Dhanu Singh Purti into the lives of whole people resulted in the publishing of seven volumes of whole customs. His contribution to whole liturgy and catechetical works is simply mind-boggling. He has published the New Testament and part of the Old Testament in whole. His books on whole grammar and vocabulary and whole English dictionary are much sought after by research scholars from India and overseas. <laughs> Tribal Research and Training Center popularly known as TRTC, was started by Father Matthew Ari Parambal way back in 1981 at St. Devia's Lukun with the aim of making people aware of their power to organize themselves for building up a new society based on the values of justice, love and peace. TRTC is the first one to impart non-formal education to the tribals in their own language on a large scale with almost 200 night centers. In the year 2005, TRTC was shifted to Guira under the leadership of Father Mike Tanaraj to intensify its activities. TRTC's legal cell under Father Tom Nelly provides free legal aid to the oppressed tribals taking up their cases in the district court. Yuva Jumur, a youth organization of unorganized youth, has 130 youth clubs in the villages to manage village affairs. Father Mike Turkey provides adequate information to the villages on the functioning of Gram Sabha and other village organizations. Since 2004, TRTC is involved in running watershed projects in the district. In 2006, the Kolhan Community College was started to impart job-oriented training in the field of driving motor mechanics, electrical appliances and wiring, tailoring and computer software applications. The center conducts seminars and workshops on socially related issues such as deforestation, displacement, human rights and health. TRTC has a research library with over 4,000 books and documentary data and research papers which are a rare treasure not to be found elsewhere. CSWC, Clever Social Welfare Center, was originally started in Saraikela in the year 1982 as an extension project of DSWC in Dunbad. Under the guidance of Father Lawrence Hunt, Father Felix Tellis initiated the Saraikela Leprosy Project with the paramedical staff of CSWC doing a thorough survey of 40 villages in order to ascertain the number of leprosy cases in these villages. Eventually, the center was shifted to Raj Kashwan, Amda, where DFIT, Damien Foundation India Trust, built a hospital with the ambitious aim of eradicating leprosy from the region. CSWC has so far diagnosed 30,000 patients and remedial measures have been taken up ever since the project started in 1982. St. Ignatius School, Rengra, was started in 1982 in small huts like this by Father Joseph Kalathil and scholastic Raphael with the purpose of making high school education available to the tribal children of Tonto Block, scattered between forests and hills. 
This block is one of the most backward and underdeveloped areas of Jharkhand state. In 2006, Rengra got a new school building which came as a gift from Loyola School Jamshedpur. The Jesuits in Rengra run a middle school, high school, hostel for boys and girls. A dispensary run by SCJM sisters acts as a lifeline for the forest dwellers. Though the school is situated in the jungle about 15 miles away from Chaibasa town, students are not deprived of quality education. The Jesuit staff as well as other teaching staff make much needed sacrifices to stay in the isolated area to make the life of the hose meaningful. We could say that establishing our school, St. Ignatius High School in Rengla, the pioneer's vision is slowly coming to the light. The Jesuits have a parish in Rengra which is scattered far and wide through several villages. I like to work for the overdevelopment of all the people, whether they're tribals or non-tribals, Hindus or Christians, and so on. I would like to take them together. I would like to make them aware of the presence of God. And I like to establish the kingdom of God in this part of Jharkhand. St. John's Center in Tepasai was started in 1983 by Father Anthony Swami with the sole objective of contacting people and building Christian communities among the Hoes. A multi-purpose mud hall became the place of worship. Over the years, evangelization has shown satisfactory growth in the Tepasai area. All the Jesuits are collectively working towards meeting the spiritual needs of the faithful. The Jesuits are running a school in the limited land available. It began as a primary school. At the demand of local people, it is in the process of reaching the high school level soon. No one can ever imagine the enthusiasm and vigor displayed by the village children of Kepasai. The hostel facility is a blessing to the children coming from far away forest and hill areas. On my own experience, I feel that we are rich, rich in the sense, the level of cooperation, the level of participation, and in the level of parents' involvement in the whole management of the school. It helps us and it encourages us to do more do greater service, which Ignatius often calls it magic. And we, we are striving to do our best, trying to attain that vision of St. Ignatius. St. Paul Mickey Parish, Bordeaux, is the fruit of Father John Deeney's tireless pastoral efforts since 1963. From 1974 to 1995, some 20 plus years, Father Dini looked after Bordor mission, catechizing, baptizing, and administering the sacraments. The Eucharist was celebrated in one of the houses in Bordor. In 1998, with the arrival of Father George Anthony, it was erected as a parish. Father Gregory de Silva, who succeeded George, went ahead in purchasing land for parish and extended the place of worship to accommodate the increasing number of the faithful. More than 200 families have come into the Catholic fold within a short span of 10 years. In 2005, the Jesuits began to live in the village in the newly constructed Jesuit residence and began a primary school in the residence building itself under the coordination of Father Romanos Kerketa. St. Xavier School, Basahatu, about three miles from Raj Karshwan Railway Station, was started in the year 2001. Father John Dini arranged for the necessary funds and Brother Pascal Kirketa looked after the construction work. 
today under the leadership of Father Benedict Minge, St. Xavier's School stands tall in the service of the people of Basahatu. The school couldn't have been possible without the evangelical efforts of Father Dini in that area, who kept in touch with the people ever since 1963. As I see, this parish is really flourishing, and this is the hard work, hard work of our fathers, Father Dini, Paul, and others. And I am very happy to say that uh, it is ever-growing parish and people are very interested in our mission work and in our apostolates and many are attracted towards us. The Nobali School at Digwadi came about in 1956 from a request made to Father McFarland by Dr. Alinath Lahiri, the then director of Central Fuel Research Institute. Today, the Nobili English Medium School has a primary school, high school, and junior college, besides a Hindi medium high school to cater to the poorer section of the coal belt. The 20-acre campus with thousands of children on it is a joy for the eyes. The dedication of the students and the hard work displayed by the staff are exemplary. Father George Hess's contribution in building up the complex over a span of 17 years calls for a round of applause. No wonder he is looked upon with awe as all and sundry refer to him as the living legend of the coal field. I have been meeting uh, lots of alumni from uh, Calcutta, uh, Nobilians who are in Calcutta, Delhi, Bangalore and uh, I keep getting Nobilians back in the school and uh, while talking to them they have one thing to say that is what the Nobili has done to them that is value education. The Nobili school has been uh, stressing values for over 50 years and I am happy that Jesuits have made a tremendous impression in the whole field. In the Dinobali campus we have St. Mary's Parish. It began in the year 2000 with Father Casey Anthony as the first parish priest. The new church building is in the pipeline and is being nursed along through the efforts of veteran Father Alex Miskit to provide the right ambiance for the prayer for the faithful of the place. The Nobile Bhavan is the headquarters or secretariat of the Nobile Brown Schools that was established in 1999 by Father Kuruvala Varunkal. The quality education imparted in Digwadi caught the eyes of various organizations in the coal capital requesting the Jesuit administration to open similar schools in their respective areas. This led Father George Hess to open the Nobili branch schools at CMRI, Sijwa, Chandrapura, Mugma, Maithan, and Sindri. The Nobili branch school system has been going on for the last 30 years. Uh, it was the vision of uh, uh, Father George Hess. Probably that time it was neither accepted nor it was taken seriously. But as we have moved on in, uh, in years, we have realized the value of uh, involving lay people in our uh, education work. Jisu Jaher, a Santal mission center, is about 20 miles away from Dhanbad, situated in Tundi. It was Father Norbert Kindo, a diocesan priest, who prepared the groundwork for the possible entry for the Jesuits. In 1983, Bishop Joseph Rodericks entrusted Tundi Mission to the Society, and Father Walter Kungari was made the first parish priest. Presently, Father George Anthony and Father James Barra are deeply committed to give a new vision to the Santal mission in Tundi. The parish has uh, many activities. 
besides uh, faith formation we also have um, activities that um, speak about uh, the social character of the church and also the social teachings of the church and the issues that affect the people especially in terms of displacement we have had seminars in, in terms of health ministry and also emphasizing this education of apostolate here Thundi Mission has achieved remarkable results over the years with the hostel facility St. Xavier's High School in Tundi remains a much sought after school in the area. This is St. Mary's Center at Chandan Kiari. It was in the year 2001 that Father Casey Anthony purchased 16 acres of land in Chandan Kiari town near Dhanbad for the extension work of the province. Soon it became a center for vocational training activities and a base for evangelization. An English medium school was started by Father Sonny Jacob and today it is managed and run by the Holy Cross Sisters. The Jesuits helped the school in running the hostel. Chandan Kiari is a central place for pastoral work in the railway colony of Bujadi. It is a tiny parish that was built by Father Casey, having just 23 families. Besides pastoral work, Casey renders free medical treatment to poor patients coming to him for herbal medicines and electromagnetic therapy. His healing ministry still goes on, attracting people to St. Mary's Center. Jilling Mission in West Bengal was brought into being in 1992 by Father James Kalapura, who lived among the Sabors in Sabarpura. Since Sabors were blacklisted as thieves and hired assassins, they were often harassed by the police. The tangible contribution to the people of Jilling from the Society of Jesus came in the form of Loyola School and a hostel for children. The area is uh, very undeveloped. Uh, education is a kind of a remote thing. It's more of a luxury. And so, and people also uh, have such mindset that they are not interested in educating their children. And especially if they are girls. Especially in this area where girls are kind of looked upon um, something uh, not very useful. Because everyone says, parents, if you say, why don't you bring the girls, they always say, oh, she is going to go to somebody else's house, why should I waste my money? This is their way of looking at things and uh, it's a really sad kind of mentality. Archbishop of Katak Bhuneshwar invited Jamshedpur Jesuits to come and work in Odisha. In the beginning, we started our mission in Bhuneswar itself, having our house, Loyala Bhavan, Forest Park, Bhuneswar. Then we moved on to XIM, that was established, and today we are running that institute. Human Life Center, which became the center of activities for the youth. Then we established ourselves in Bhuneswar, and slowly we began to move out in different parts of the state. We feel that our service is very much needed, especially in rural areas. And our concentration has been in the rural areas. And we hope as Odisha becomes a region, we will be able to serve more people in different areas. And we hope to expand in new places. And these are the areas where our services, our works are needed. Father Robert Sequera of Karnataka province in the south of India was the first Jesuit to land in Bhubaneswar on the eastern coast of India in November 1979. However, the Jamshedpur Jesuit province ventured into full-fledged apostolic activity in Bhubaneswar to Father Gaidara in 1984, even though Father Tony Roberts and Father Emil Coelho 
were already doing marginal pastoral work since 1981 at the invitation of the then Archbishop Henry de Souza. Today, Human Life Center is a much sought after vocational training center in the state capital. HLC runs a variety of programs like spoken English, typing and shorthand, computer and managerial skills. Almost 5,000 students benefit from this institute every year. HLC Human Life Center is also involved in the literacy program in seven slums in the capital. A Jesuit coordinates non-formal and adult education, rehabilitation, medical aid and training programs for the link staff of the slums. Loyola Bhavan, the mother house of the Orissa Jesuits, is situated at 58 Forest Park, just a mile away from the Bhubaneswar railway station. It was started in 1985 with Father John Gaiderer as its first superior. Loyola Bhavan is the home for the treasurer of Orissa Jesuit Society, Brother Oscar Rodericks, Father Robert Sequera, and Father Savari Muttu. Xavier Institute of Management, Bhubaneswar, popularly known as XIMB, was founded in the year 1987 with the vision to achieve excellence in management education and socio-economic development. In the year 1985, the then Orissa Chief Minister, Sri J.B. Patnaik, invited Father Romuald de Souza, the then Director of XLRI, to start a top-class management institute in Orissa. Today, XIM is a world-renowned total quality institution with a state-of-the-art infrastructure. The entire campus is Wi-Fi enabled. XIM not only prepares leaders in the corporate sector through PGP postgraduate program in business management, but also prepares committed and competent leaders we cannot remain a small institute anymore, so we are looking at another campus. Uh, we want to shift first of all our rural management program from this campus to this new campus. Because the, the rural management milieu is different from the business management uh, uh, program that we have. I think that will have some impact on the learning that they will have. So this is the only institute in the country which offer business management program and rural management program in the same place. Loyola School Bhubaneswar came into existence in 2001. Father P. Tony Raj along with an old veteran Father Eric Castle left no stone unturned to bring the school to the level it is today. Loyola is a full-fledged co-ed school today which stresses discipline, etiquette, and excellence in every field. Under the banner of Rainbow School, Loyola has committed itself to serve the slum community by educating the slum children who do not have access to formal education. The difference comes from the presence of the Jesuits, even though the Jesuits have been coming and going, but whoever has spent time in this place has left his impact on the parents, on the teachers, on the students, their very presence has made a calculable difference in the uh, attitude of parents. They feel that their children are safe over here, that they are given an uh, uh, education where a lot of care and individual attention is given. And above all, I think it's the values that we are inculcating that make a difference. The Sunday Mass Center at Loyola, under the pastoral leadership of Father Ajit Bahala, attracts hundreds of faithful to practice their Christian faith. St. Joseph School, Kendrapara, on the way to Paradeep Port, was begun by the Katak Bhubaneswar Diocese on a small scale. 
at the request of Archbishop Raphael Chinat, Jesuits took charge of the school in 1996. By the hard work and selfless service of Father James Taranil, it was raised to the standard of ICSE level. Next came Father Kuruvilla to raise the level of the school with decent classrooms and a well-groomed campus suited for the all-round development of the students. Committed staff members are a great help to the Jesuit management to march towards the school's aims and objectives. Jesuit involvement in the pastoral work has already made an impact that will one day reach out to many more areas. In the district of Kendrapada, we have got only two mass centers. That's Kendrapada proper and there's another place 35 kilometers from here. That is called Arunanagar. Where the, the people are mostly poor and migrated from West Bengal, belong to Dalit community. And there are around 80 families, among them 64 families are Catholics. Loyola English School in Sankabanga near Baripada was started in the year 2002 by Father Clement Kujur and Brother Benedict Kichingia. Their aim was to bring the Santal tribe to the mainstream society by imparting knowledge in English. Though the school is run in the corridors of the Jesuit residence, it does not compromise with the quality of teaching. Though English is an alien language to these village children, its success is seen in their diligent efforts to learn. With the construction of a new school building, the children's future looks ever bright. Sahavikas at Pulbani is a candidate's house situated 150 miles away from Bhubaneswar in Khandamahal district. Father S. Tony Raj initially started the centre as a rural resource centre to train XIM's rural management students. But in the year 2003, the centre was made available for training candidates since the need of the hour was to attract more vocations to the Society of Jesus from Orissa. The storehouse of lime and fire bricks was restructured to suit the living and training standard of a formation house. The boys from Orissa come here and study. After their matriculation, they come here and stay for two years. They go to Government College Fulbani. After finishing their plus two, they go to Mango for their novitiate. Further away from Fulbani in the jungles is Ruthungia village, where Jesuits are running our village parish. In the year 1995, Archbishop Raphael Chinat of Katak Bhubaneswar requested the Jesuits to take care of Rutingya mission situated on the hills with a dense forest all around, largely inhabited by the Khond tribe. The parish consists of village mass centers spread over 37 village units. Dedi Maha mass center is one such example. Once upon a time, uh, Rutungya Parish had just few mandalis. Now it has grown to 37. And uh, every time there are new mandalis are coming up, people are so enthusiastic joining the Catholic Church. And in this village itself, we will see other denominations also. But uh, as it is now, uh, the c Catholic population is increasing. People are uh, showing a lot of uh, interest to join our Catholic church. Besides parish activities, the Jesuits are involved in educating children in the remote jungle. St. Xavier's school, which began with four-roomed wall structure, has today become one of the best rural schools of the state. Hostel facility for both boys and girls has strengthened the efforts to promote education in this area. It is rather unusual sight to see the town people 
coming to Rutungia village in search of quality education. The simple lifestyle of Jesuits living in Rutungia is the secret of their success in this distant land of Orissa. A lot of struggle went through. People recognized our hard work and uh, at this juncture already uh, two set of students passed uh, from the metric examination and we produced a good result, almost 98% we got. So seeing this and experiencing our hard work, people appreciated and there is a heavy rush to this place. St. Ignatius Parish at Tumri Bandhu, about 20 miles from Baliguda, was canonically erected on 21st of June 1993 with Father Jerry Khujur as the first parish priest. The majority of the Catholic population is situated in the hills. Religious fervor expressed itself in their devotion to Mother Mary. One such occasion is the Feast of Our Lady of Good Health at Roda village near Pajigiri. Today we are celebrating our Luth Parva in this Roda Mandali. This is the uh, celebration of Mother Mary. And we call this Luth Feast because usually we celebrate this feast on the February month. And in this uh, feast, we have come all, uh, all the 13 Mandalis uh, people here and all, almost about three, four thousand people are uh, gathered here and today we will be celebrating Mass and the Mass they offer their prayer, their offerings and they enjoy and people are happy and this is every year's affair and we are also and in this way their faith grows so that way we are building their faith for mission. Pachikeri is the most interior mission station of Jamshedpo province among the Kondos in Urissa. It is by running non-formal literacy centers in Pachikiri locality that Jesuits won the faith and support of the people. Their immediate requirement was met by opening a quality Uriya medium school Loyola with Helai in the year 2000 by Father Victor Joseph and scholastic Ajit Bahala. Earlier on, Father Tony P. Raj had done the donkey work for purchasing the land, which can be quite a frustrating operation. In spite of the poor infrastructure, within a short span of time, the Jesuits proved to the villagers that quality education is also possible even at the top of the Kondamohal hills. Beside the school, there is a hostel. In the hostel, there are 40 children, boys and girls. The main objective of this school is to educate the tribals and Dalits of this area. Besides the school activities, Father Isidore is helping villages implement government funded projects. In Pajikiri, we are running a project called Biomass Gasifier System. The speciality of this project is by burning firewood, we will be creating or generating electricity. Right now, we have completed house wiring for 63 houses. Soon, we will be getting a generator of 10 kilowatts and then we will start producing electricity by burning firewood and for one hour of electricity we will use four kilos of firewood and this will be used for all 63 houses. The brother's vocation to the Jamshedpo Jesuit province has been and is a great blessing. Today, Jamshitpo Jesuit province is proud to have 10 committed brothers who share equal responsibilities with the priests. Their service in the field of education, formation and social action 
is mind-blowing. The humility with which they respond to the demands of the work is truly amazing. Brothers like the late William Braganza, Guy Ames, Joe Benello have given invaluable service towards the building up of the Jamshedpur Jesuit province since its inception. Their vocation is a joy to each of us who have shared their company and their companionship. The Jamshedpur Jesuits are not just engaged in works of the province. They do help out the dioceses of the region. Father Stan Kujur and Father R. Tony Raj are directly involved in the training of seminarians in Balasore and Padanpur. Since 1984, St. Paul's Minor Seminary administration has been taken care of by the Jamshedpur province. Father George Hess, inspired by the healing ministry of Jesus, took up the task of building a hospital, Loyola Hospital, at Kalinga Vihar in Bhubaneswar to provide health care to the poor and thereby creating a healthy society. Father Hilary Lobo runs a well-known English medium St. Xavier's School at Purulia. Father Faith Bian Bunya helps the Jamshedpo Diocese in running the pastoral center, while Father Beni Kujur and Father John Sumburi serve in Sundargar and Rugudisai Mission stations in Orissa. Father Vijay Kachap serves as Chancellor and Youth Director of the Diocese of Jamshedpur. In Jamshedpur, the Society of Jesus and the Diocese both work very well together. They collaborate, and there is mutual understanding. There is also mutual sharing of personnel, um, even other resources. Uh, this is a big blessing. Big blessing. There is a good understanding among the priests. There is uh, acceptability and, uh, and uh, you know tolerance, and everything is there. And this has become. Uh, an idea for other dioceses and provinces and we are proud of it. We, are, we thank the Lord for this. Your blessing.